A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Hello my mathematicians, welcome back to Nahalia and today we are going to find out um, how to determine if a number is divisible by 7 because from my ex experience speaking um, this is the divisibility rule that gets left out most often at schools. Basically no one teaches it because they think well the students are too dumb to understand but there are actually many algorithms out there um, with which you can determine if a number is divisible by 7 and it's not too hard to, to remember and we are going to talk about one of these rules today and why it actually works and <laughs> actually this whole uh, scheme with not telling students how to divide by 7 basically um, I experienced it at school several times asking my teacher and my elementary school teacher even claimed that that he would get a Nobel Prize um, in mathematics which doesn't even exist in the first place if you were to find out um, if a number is divisible by 7 if you could find an algorithm so yeah, this is kind of rich if you ask me. <laughs> but yeah, let us talk about a few divisibility rules that you are probably familiar with and after that we are going to talk about the number 7. Because for example, to determine if a number is divisible by 2, you just check if the last digit is divisible by 2. For example, um, 1006 is divisible by 2 because um, 6 is divisible by 2. Cool stuff, right? For, um, if you want to find out if a number is divisible by 3, you take the digit sum. Okay, for example, on 135, taking the digit sum is 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 3 5 is going to give a 9 and 9 is divisible by 3 hence the whole thing is divisible by 3. You can um, even iterate this further. It's a proof by finite descent you could say. Um, for example to determine if a number is divisible by 6 it must be um, divisible by 2 and by 3 for example and so on. There are many rules out there but the number 7 this is kind of special but it's not too hard to determine. Um, I'm going to show you the algorithm and then we are going to talk about why it works in the first place basically giving you a rough sketch of the proof. So let us say, um, okay, let's see, 173. I don't even know if it's divisible by 7. We're going to see. What you are basically going to do is, you are going to cover this bit up, just take the last digit, you are going to double it, and then subtract the doubled number from the number that is still left here. Meaning what we are going to do is, we are going to say, okay, we are going to take 27, and then we are going to double the 3 and subtract it from it. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, negative 6. This is going to give you 21. Oh, 21 is indeed divisible by 7 because 21 divided by 7 is 3. Hence the original number is also divisible by 7. This is how it works. Pretty easy to, to remember, right? This is even easier to remember than the digit sum thing, if you ask me, or the, uh, or the alternating digit sum theorem for divisibility by 11. Let us take a look at another example. Let's say um, 1006, for example, once again. Okay, let us see if this number is divisible by 7. Once again, we are going to double this number 6, which is 12, and we are going to subtract it from 100. Meaning, we are going to say 100 minus 12 is going to give you overall, this is going to be 88. Hmm, 88. Is it divisible by 7? I don't think so, because, um, yeah, this is 70 plus um, 18, but 18 is not divisible by 7, hence, since this number is not divisible by 7, the original one isn't either. Pretty cool, right? And pretty easy to remember. Now, why does it work in the first place? It's actually pretty easy to derive by using a few simple tricks that mathematicians hate. <laughs> okay, at first we are going to propose that we have a number n, for example. Okay, we are going to um, take a numerical example and we are going to work through it. Let's say n is equal to 27, 3. What we are going to do now is we are going to split this number up. Namely, we are going to take away the last digit from it. So this right here is the same as saying, okay, n is equal to 270 plus 3. And now remember what our rule stated. What we did is we just took a look at the first two numbers. And the first two numbers here are actually nothing but, okay, 27 times 10 and the whole thing plus 3. Meaning what we basically do is we take our number n and we are going to split it up into a part um, which is at the front right here that we are going to multiply with 10. Let's say this right here is 10 times s and what we are going to be left with is the last digit okay, that we still have in this number. Let's call this digit t. Okay, now how can you proceed from this point? What we're going to do is we are going to manipulate this t right here into something that is divisible by 7 in, in some way, but the remainder, kind of, okay, another part that we're going to get is a multiple of 10. Can you guess it? 
what we're going to do is we're going to add a zero to this whole thing and the zero is going to be of the form 20 times t minus 20 times t. I mean if I give you 20 t apples and take the 20 t apples away from you, you are going to be left with zero apples changing nothing on the original equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to collect terms now. Now n is hence nothing but, okay we're going to get 10 s on the one hand, then what we still have is, okay, adding those two together is going to give us plus 21t and like I said a second ago, 21 is divisible by 7. We wanted to get something in the equation which is divisible by 7. This is going to make it easier for us to basically use um, divisibility rules overall. And other than that, what we're going to be left with is negative 20t, but 20 is nothing but 2 times 10. So what we are going to get is negative 10 times 2t. Now the cool thing is we can factor out 10 on this term right here. So that's equivalent to saying that n is hence nothing other than 10 times, okay we get s minus 2t which you might recognize as our divisibility rule that we have up here. s in our case was 27 and what we are going to do is we are going to subtract 2t 2 times 3 from it, okay? And plus 21t. Now what you can basically do is you can now check if your n is divisible by 7. We are going to suppose that it's divisible by 7. If we now divide by 7 then this thing right here is going to be a natural number overall. We are also going to divide this side by 7. I mean obviously the numerator's additive we can break it up leaving us with 10 times s minus 2t over 7 plus 21 t over 7. But exactly by our construction 21 over t divided by 7 is going to be well 3 times t which is by definition a natural number yet again. And now by assuming that n is actually divisible by 7 we also know since 10 is not divisible by 7 that s minus 2 t must be divisible by 7. And here yeah, this is basically what we are going to do. You can iterate this process over and over. Now if this number is not divisible by 7 then all of this construction is not going to work leaving us to a contradiction. But supposing or if the number is actually divisible by 7 we can conclude that this construction right here s minus 2t must be divisible by 7 by the construction that we have right here and then you can proceed. Then you can check if s minus 2t is once again divisible by 7 going down the line even further iterating this process. Let us take a look at a concrete example where iterating the process actually does make sense. This does make sense for bigger numbers for example let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Okay let's see if this number is divisible by 7. We're going to suppose that it's divisible by, by 7. Okay meaning what we're going to do by the construction is we take the first digits, we're going to double the last digit and we're going to subtract it from it. Okay 1234 minus 12 is going to give us 1222. <laughs> That's a nice number. Okay good. Now we're going to check if this number is divisible by 7 once again because we are just going to suppose it is. Okay we are going to go down the line in a finite descent to prove the divisibility by 7 on this number. Now what we're going to do once again is we're going to take the last digit away, double it and subtract it from 122 minus 4 is going to give us, ah, this right here is going to give us 118 overall. Now we need to check if 118 is actually divisible by 7. This number shall not be divisible by 7, you can already check this but we can go a step further and say okay we are going to take our algorithm once again. 11 minus 2 times 8 it's going to give you 16 which is going to result in negative 5. Really doesn't matter if you have a positive or negative integer. Thing is negative 5 is not divisible by 7. Meaning if we go this whole e equivalence basically backwards we also know that um, 12,346 is not divisible by 7. And yeah this basically concludes the rule and I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did enjoy what you saw today then you might as well enjoy the content of today's sponsor Brian who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video in this channel. 
Brain is a frequent sponsor of this channel who deliver some of the best STEM related content out there on the internet. And I'm not lying when I say this because I really enjoy their stuff personally uh, myself too. And if you want to learn more about the visibility rules, uh, number theory, algebra in general, then I definitely encourage you to try out Brain today. If you go over to their website, you're going to notice that they have a variety of topics that you can go through. I mean, they have nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, physics, chemistry, etc. But they also have a dedicated community page where their members can put in exercises that you can solve for yourself. So basically endless content coming at you. Um, <laughs> not infinitely many content because this is not possible with a finite number of bytes out there. But overall, a lot of content that you are never going to be able to cover in a a lifetime's worth. But other than that, they also have a dedicated Wikipedia page where you can put in, for example, facts about the dialogue rhythm, for example, or other math, physics, etc. related um, topics. And also, obviously, their courses make up the biggest part of the website. And if you are a sucker for interactive content, just tracking around stuff, feeling the stuff, basically, just, um, for, for example, going through a graph, turning it around, the 3D graph and multivariable calculus, then Brilliant is definitely the best website for you to learn new things that you haven't discovered before. And if you really want to try it out, if you think that Brilliant could be a perfect fit for you, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. But the first 200 people, and that's very important to actually actually use the link, get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have on their website already. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, recommend channel of like. Also check out STEM merch for the very cool merch that you see here in the background. And I'm going to keep my outro short from now on. <laughs> That's about it. See ya. That's a little uh, Charlie reference. Penguinos. Ciao. <laughs>